Here's an article, my amigos. A little article for ya. I'm not rich, but I am financially free. And here's how I got there. Okay, let's face it. The more choices we have in life, the richer and more rewarding it becomes. Fortunately, I'm currently in that coveted sweet spot where I can do pretty much whatever the heck I please, whenever I want. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not in a position to buy whatever I want, but I am able to take advantage of a lot of opportunities in life that are typically out of reach for the financially undisciplined crowd. So, financially speaking, I'm in a pretty good place right now. Flexibility is a powerful perk. If I want to drop everything right now and take a spur-of-the-moment vacation or visit some friends on the other side of the country, I can do it. I mean, true, I won't be flying first class or staying in five-star hotels, but I can do it in a financially reasonable manner, knowing that the bills will be paid in full shortly after they arrive in the mailbox. You see, many of you know that several years ago, I made the biggest impulse purchases of my life shelling out almost $2,500 from a mad money savings account I have on a couple of tickets to see my hockey team play a Stanley Cup final game. And I don't regret it for one minute. I'm also fortunate right now to be in a position to handle unanticipated financial surprises, like the time I got blindsided with a dentist bill for $3,332 to cover the cost of, I mean, among other things, having my son's impacted wisdom teeth removed, and while that really smarted at the time, I was thankful to be able to pay the entire bill without having to take out a loan because I had a rainy day fund to handle unexpected expenses. The quest for financial freedom. Although a lot of folks would disagree with me, I'm not rich, but I am financially free. It's important to understand that the two are not synonymous. Believe it or not, financial freedom can be achieved no matter how much money you earn. All it takes is a lot of discipline a little patience, and a strong commitment to spend less than you earn, which is why I constantly preach that financial freedom is a state of mind as much as it's a state of being. So how did I get to this point? Well, there are two big reasons. I've always lived below my means, always. I've kept my debt to a minimum. That's not to say all debt is bad, it's not. But for as long as I can remember, other than cars and houses, I've never bought anything unless I've had the money already set aside to pay for it in full. That simple strategy has allowed me to avoid tens of thousands of dollars in interest payments over the years. That's money I've been able to spend on fun things like a last minute vacation to Hawaii and even more importantly, feed into my retirement, rainy day funds. The moral of the story, it's never too late to start your quest for financial freedom. Remember, if I can do this, you can too. Even if you have a modest income and currently find yourself buried under a mountain of debt, you've got to trust me on this one. The only catch is you've really got to want it. The bottom line is this. Debt limits your choices and future opportunities in life because you end up spending tomorrow's wages today. The good news is that by forcing and then keeping the red ink on your balance sheet to a minimum, you'll not only keep more control of your life as you get older, but you'll also gain the financial flexibility to make it richer and more rewarding too. The word of the day, that's right, the word of the day. Language. The words, their pronunciation, and the methods of combining them used and understood by a community. Form or style of verbal expression. A system of signs and symbols and rules for using them that is used to carry information. That's all I got. Yahoo!